Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy. We're going to install this new water pump impeller in our 5.7 GSI Volvo Penta inboard outboard engine. So please watch this video all the way through because I will guide you through the process of doing this yourself so that you don't make the same mistakes that I make in this video. <laughs> So of course, before I started this, I brought out my trusty bucket of tools because this is something I'm having to do on the boat. In my trusty bucket of tools, I brought both a standard set of sockets and a metric set of sockets. On this particular style of boat, the housing for the water pump impeller is located on the front of the engine. So when you're inside working on this inboard outboard motor, as you lift your back seat or your engine compartment, right down there where the belt is, is where this water pump impeller housing is located on the lower part of the engine, way down at the bottom on what actually is the crankshaft of this Chevrolet V8 engine. For my particular application, you have to lean way down in the engine compartment there over top of a panel, which I could remove, but there's a lot of steps to remove that panel. Another word of caution about doing this project, be careful if you go to do this with your boat in the water. If your boat is in the water, that impeller housing may be below the water line. And if you go to pull one of those hoses off or that impeller housing off, you may be letting in raw water from the river, bay, sea, whatever, as you pull that apart. So make sure that you go to do this with your engine out of the water, on the trailer, up on a lift, or making sure in some other way that those hoses are not going to be pouring seawater into your engine compartment. The water pump impeller cover is this brass looking thing with pipes coming off of it. Now I had already taken off both of my hoses when I winterized my engine in the fall. So both of the hoses off of my water pump impeller housing were already removed. The other things that we have to remove to do this is there's this big sort of C-shaped bracket and it has two bolts that hold it to the engine block and that bracket holds this impeller housing from rotating on front of the engine. On my particular boat, the two bolts that hold that on are 9 16 bolts. For your particular engine, this may be a little bit different. But for my motor, I had to remove these bolts blindly, meaning I could only work by feel. There's nowhere from above for me to be able to see these two bolts. So I had to kind of feel around this bracket and feel along where these two bolts were holding it onto the engine. Blindly reaching in there, I was able to loosen those two bolts from the bracket, and then that whole bracket was able to be lifted out of the way. With that particular bracket out of the way, and now to get to the impeller, the only thing are these four brass bolts that are located on the front of the water pump impeller housing. Now those bolts have a standard flathead screw cut into them, but also they're very tiny and I tried several sockets on there to try to figure out which was the right size for this particular section and found out that these were actually eight millimeter. It's the only metric thing I found on my boat so far. Now, as with the other bolts, you have to be very careful not to drop these bolts in the bilge. Once you feel these bolts starting to come loose with your ratchet, pull it away and use your fingertips on there to see if you can loosen them the rest of the way with your fingers. If so, it's much easier in that situation to be able to hold your hand underneath of it or hold your fingers on the bolt head tightly to be able to pull it out and not drop it down in the bilge. Because once again, you drop it in the bilge, now you've got a whole other problem on your hands trying to fish it out of the bilge. So with all four of those screws loosened and removed from the impeller housing, I was able to work the impeller housing off. It's kind of snug, you kind of have to wiggle it around a little bit but with a little bit of wiggling, and if you have to, maybe a flathead screwdriver or something similar to gently pull it away from the front of the engine. I bought my Volvo Penta impeller kit off of Amazon.com. This particular kit is 219-51346. 
So if you've been watching my other videos, you know now that I'm 0 for 2 with regards to ordering the correct type impeller for my boats. So since my boat had been sitting all winter with the impeller housing dry because I had winterized my, my motor, I had to use a screwdriver to pry out the old impeller. It was in there a little bit tight, it was a little bit stuck. So I just carefully kind of worked it out with a screwdriver, just sort of pushing and prying on it a little bit. Remember, don't get too radical with this stuff because you could bend the housing or you could tear something up, injure yourself. Little bit of working with the screwdriver, kind of wiggling it around, working it back and forth, and then the impeller came out. And I inspected the impeller, and other than the one side fins being a little bit crushed from how it was sitting all winter, uh, the impeller looked really good. And it actually kind of sprang back to life pretty quickly. So now that you've got your old impeller removed from the housing, make sure the housing is nice and clean. Use a little bit of the impeller lubricant on there, sprinkling that around there or whatever. It's sort of a clear liquidy lubricant. It's actually not too bad as far as those things go. I sort of rubbed it all in there and then fit the rubber impeller into the new housing. This one does not require the use of a zip tie or any other tools to be able to force it in. You can simply twist and push it in. But what they recommend that you do is make sure that you're twisting it in the direction that it's going to be spinning. So look at how the old impeller was, which way the fins were pointing, and put the new one in the same way. Mine was pointing with the fins in a certain direction, so as I was pushing it in, trying to work in the fins on one side, I was rotating it with my hand to sort of work it in, so that way the fins would be bent in the right direction. I have heard other people say it doesn't matter which way you put that in, is that once it's in in the engine, when you fire the engine off, it will then flip and go the right direction. But to not take any chances and put any undue strain on the brand new impeller, ideally it's nice to have it facing the correct direction as you're installing it. If your kit did not come with impeller lube, you can use dishwashing detergent as well. That's not going to necessarily harm your engine or do any damage to the rubber components inside of there. And dish detergent will quickly wash away inside of the uh, cooling system there. If you just use a little bit of that on there as a lubricant for the impeller. So once you've got your new impeller seated all the way down in there with some impeller lubrication in there, Wipe everything off, get your hands all nice and clean, and then let's start the reassembly. Before we go to put the housing on, the first thing we want to do is we put the O-ring on front of the housing area. Slide the O-ring all the way in. It will fit in there in a groove. It should fit snugly around there. Use a little bit of the impeller grease on that O-ring, maybe just a little bit of it to make sure that it doesn't, you know, tear or anything as it's going in. And then carefully press the housing back in place. You might have to wiggle it a little bit as you're getting it on there and then push it in place. And it should fit all the way on there. The inside of the impeller has splines on it, but as you saw, it has several splines. So this thing can be sort of worked on there, wiggling it around a little bit to put it in place. Also, what's interesting about this particular housing is the four bolts are not exactly evenly spaced. So what that means is that that only fits on one specific way. What I noticed with mine is once I had it off is that the part that it bolts to actually spins freely on the front of the engine. So I had to realign that part as I was putting this on to make sure that everything fit together just right, making sure all four of my bolt holes lined up. The way I approached it was I took the easiest bolt to put on first, which in my case is the upper left bolt because that's one where you can see where it goes and you can easily get your fingers in there to do it. There's one bolt that goes between the inlet and the outlet pipe, and that bolt is very hard to get to. That bolt you wanna carefully set in the head of the socket, hold it in place with your finger as you're putting it into the engine so that way it doesn't fall out, and then carefully thread it into there. Take your time here, try not to drop these little eight millimeter bolts. Let's set all of them in, Get them started finger tight and then tighten them down. Now there are specific torque specifications for all of these bolts. The one I follow is just making them quite tight. So how are you liking this video so far? If you like this video, please be sure to give it a like below. 
Thank you. Make sure all four bolts are tightened evenly. Different people approach that different ways. A lot of times people like to work across from each other. So they do the top left, lower right, top right, lower left. Once all four of those bolts are in, the housing is in place. Now you can put on the big C-shaped bracket. One of the things that I noticed afterwards was a non-Volvo Penta branded impeller kit that sold on Amazon also has a new rubber tip that fits on that C-shaped clamp, which fits between the inlet and the outlet pipes. And I thought, well, that's a neat idea because it would really be nice to have a new rubber tip there because mine is very cracked up and it also fell off of the clamp as I went to put the clamp in place and I had to fish it out of the bilge and put it back on again and try to hold it in place as I was putting it back together. These bolts, I'll admit, were a little harder to put in. So I would set the bolt in the tip of the socket and carefully reach in there. One of the bolts is above the top pipe and the other one was below the bottom pipe. So that's how I remembered how I took them out, what to reach above and below as I was working on this. And so as I threaded the bolt into there, then I reached around with my other hand to kind of hold the bracket in place, find the threads of the bolt and carefully line it up in the hole and then worked it with my fingers first to get it started. If you go in there with a power tool or with a ratchet and you just start going in there wrenching, you could easily strip out those bolts or break them off inside of the block. And that's something you don't want to do because once again, it's a very, very difficult area to get to and you're working blindly unless you take a lot of other components off the front of the engine. Now, those two particular bolts were very hard to pop free originally, so I cranked them really tight on the front of the engine. So once this bracket is back on, I double checked all of my bolts to make sure everything was tightened appropriately, and then it's time to put the hoses back on again. Squeeze the hoses back in place, making sure to keep the top hose lined up with the top and the bottom hose with the bottom. I had actually zip tied mine together to make sure that they stayed in the right position so I would know which one was the top and which one was the bottom hose. Once you have your hoses reinstalled, fill your system with water, make sure it's on the muffs or using a valve to be able to have water running through there and then you can start and test run your engine. So even though you just put a new impeller in, do not run the engine dry. Make sure there is water in there before you start the engine. Because even running one of these engines just for 10 seconds dry, that rubber would be burning up inside of that brass housing with the amount of spinning that it does inside of there if there's no water in there. One of the things it recommends in the manual is it says to run the engine at 1000 RPMs for 30 seconds to prime the pump. And then check to see if there is water in the exhaust flow. If there isn't, immediately stop the engine and recheck everything. When you have everything tightened back down again and you've run the engine, Check for leaks. Make sure your hoses are tight. Make sure nothing's leaking around that housing. Only you can really determine whether or not this is a project you want to tackle yourself. Some of these things look like they're quite easy and can actually be pretty complicated. Other things sound like they're really complicated, but people go to tackle them and they find them very easy to do. In your particular boat, in the configuration, how the engine is set up, it may be very accessible to do this project and you may have all of the tools that you need to do it and it goes just like that. But for some of us, it doesn't always go that way. Thank you so much for watching. Here's another video selected just for you and a playlist of videos similar to this one. Stay safe out there on the water and have a great day. I gotta return this now. This is the wrong kit.